everyone. I think that we can start. Welcome everybody to the next webinar. And today, for the first time ever, we will be doing an exterior visualization. Uh, so I'm really excited that we will create something totally new. Hello, I see your comments. Hello, oh, thank you for really nice words. Hello everyone from Greece. Oh, what's the weather in Greece? What's the temperature? <laughs> in Poland, it's called something around four degrees. Yeah. I'd like to travel to Greece, I think. Okay, I think that we can start. So let's start from the beginning. And firstly, uh, remember that you can uh, download materials for this webinar. Um, I will show you the link. Okay, the link is in the description of the video. So you can find it below the video. Oh, great weather, 19 degrees. Oh, nice. <laughs> Oh, hi from Saudi Arabia. Oh, what's the weather there in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> yeah, because in Poland it's so cold and it's dark. Like after 4 p.m. it's totally dark. It's night. So here the day is very, very short. I don't like this weather. I hate it. Yeah, all oh, 90 degrees. <laughs> From Dubai, oh, great. Also, we are all, we are, we have guests, we have visitors all around the world. Oh, from Italy, great. I was in Italy like two weeks ago in Milan or three weeks ago for weekend. It was great. Yeah. I will also start my channel like you, great. Great. Good luck with that. Mm. Hello, everyone. Hope you have a nice evening. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Lars. It's cold here in Egypt. Really? In Egypt it's cold? Let me check. It's 21 degrees. <laughs> but maybe like Egypt. Maybe in some places it's colder, in other places it's warmer weather. So it depends, I think. Okay, I think that we can start. Uh, firstly, remember that uh, you can download all the materials. The link is in the description below the video. So here we have uh, two files, exterior webinar. and uh, exterior webinar for older SketchUp versions, 2015 or newer versions. There is additional file with leaves, so really small file. And we have folder with maps. With maps and lights. So you can download all the lights, all the maps to create materials. Hello from Nigeria. Hello. Hello from Poland. <laughs> okay, uh, this is my file. Today we'll create exterior visualization. But before I do that, I forgot about one thing because on my Instagram channel, on my Instagram profile, I started a new series with mini tutorials. So if you want to learn uh, something new, um, you can visit my profile. I will send you a link on chat. Uh, and you can follow this profile uh, two times a week. I add new mini tutorial. So this is about floor generator, change the view outside the window, three best HDRI maps. 
and there will be more in Denmark it's two degrees yeah and it's raining so the Poland in Poland it's the same unfortunately okay this is our file and firstly we'll start with lights as always but in this case for exteriors I will use dome light and additionally I will use uh, sunlight so let's start um, one week ago I, add, I added a tutorial about uh, the best HDRI maps for exterior so you can check this tutorial mm, today I, I have chosen only one HDRI map which we will use during this tutorial but during this webinar but you can watch my my tutorial about lighting for exteriors okay let's do this I click on dome light over here remember to turn on all these icons just right click and choose V-Ray for SketchUp, V-Ray lights, V-Ray objects and V-Ray utilities uh, I click on the dome light and place it anywhere in the scene for example here okay I go to the asset editor over here and let's see that in the lights tab we have dome light remember that for exterior uh, uh, for exterior rendering we need uh, lights with intensity something around 30 20 for interiors um, I set higher values for example 100 but for exteriors 20 or 30 is fine but firstly I need to upload HDRI map so I click on the texture slot I click on the folder icon and then I need to find my folder it's here a lights and I click on this lights I open it okay it's done and I increase intensity for example to 20 okay that's all okay but now I will create the, the view it will be front view something like that sometimes we need to spend a lot of time to obtain the best view because it's very important mm. oh, there are many people from Greece hello everyone yeah yeah they're free <laughs> Canon 4k <laughs> okay uh, then I go to the camera two-point perspective and I'm trying to create to set front view mm, I go to the camera field of view I can change this this uh, value here at the bottom right corner I have field of view I can change it for example to okay 40 40 is fine 30 40 something like that I move it down I think it looks fine I need to change it to two-point perspective again I need to go up yeah I need some time to do it uh, okay maybe it looks yeah I think it looks good yeah it's fine I will save it so camera view animation add scene maybe I will move it down a little bit Mm -hmm. but mm, I forgot about one thing because um, I need to change the ratio so I go to the settings then I set engine I and then I go to the render output for this visualization I think that uh, this ratio 16 to 9 will be too horizontal because here we have only walls nothing interesting so I would like to show mainly this part 
the center part of the building. That's why I will change the aspect ratio to 4 to 3. And remember always to turn on, say, frame. Okay. Yeah. What is your camera height? For now it's 3 meters. I need to change it. Uh, I need to move it down. Yeah. Camera two point perspective. Move it up. Okay, it looks better. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I will I will move these benches because before webinar I've moved them to the left, but I think that they should be moved to the right. Of course, in a real project you can. Oh, but they are only benches, so. Yeah. Okay, it looks fine. I think I will save it. Uh, view, animation, and add scene. It looks okay. Yeah, you can try with different view. This uh, front view is fine, but for example, from this side, it will look really, really cool. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, so feel free to try different options. Okay, so this is our scene, this is our view. And remember to check the lighting, um, I will turn off material override option just for three minutes, only to check the lighting. So I go to the settings, material override, and I turn this option on. Okay, and let's check the render, let's check result. We will have sunlight and dome light. I think that um, this effect is too strong. Um, so I will turn on light mix render element. Remember that from V-Ray 5, we have option to turn on light mix. To do this, I click on the render element here and choose light mix. Thanks to this, we'll have control over our lights. Of course, we can change intensity and other properties of the lights in the V-Ray Asset Editor here in the Lighting tab, but we can also change these properties in post-production. So I think that the second option is fine. Remember not to set very, very low values here in Asset Editor and later in post-production increase them strongly because then you can have noise in render. So try to set proper values over here and later in post-production you can adjust these intensities, but not to, yeah, not to have, in the asset editor you have one intensity and in post-production you are changing it to 50. Yeah, these differences are too high, too, mm, yeah. Yeah, too high. <laughs> okay, and now I can turn off dome lights and turn off sunlight. This environment doesn't work, self-illumination doesn't work and rest, yeah, it's still, it's disabled. So I have two lights and I think that we need to work on sunlight. This dome light looks fine, maybe it's too dark, but remember that you can always rotate this uh, dome light. Uh, I can do this, just start interactive rendering over here to have live preview. Okay, I will place it on the right side. And here on the left side, I click on the dome light, click on this HDRI map, and I can rotate here. Yeah, I will do this again. I click on HDR map here on the texture slot, and here I have texture placement. I expand this tab and rotate H. I can rotate this map. Yeah. Oh, and for example, if I change this value, rotate, if I rotate this map by 200 degrees, my, my visualization is darker. 
So yeah, I would like to have brighter visualization. Yeah, I think that, oh, okay. I think that zero was fine. Yeah, this is white map, so there are no big differences between position. Okay, I think that zero was fine. If I change it to 200, the map is darker. I can always change intensity, for example, to 30, and visualization is brighter. Okay, but now I will focus on the sunlight. Hmm. Uh, oh, I see your comments, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, from Canada, great. Recently, we're trying to render a bathroom on a very big project. The IES lights don't show. But when I try it in another project, it works. Yeah. Maybe your IES light was in the plane. I will show you. Uh, when you are creating IES light... Oh, just give me a second. I need to find... Oh, it's here. IES light. For example, when you are creating IES light and I place it here, remember not to place this light in the plane because then it doesn't work. And the second thing is that, for example, you have another very strong light and maybe this IES light is not strong enough because for IES light you need to set very high values, for example, 10,000 and then it's visible. So maybe try to increase the intensity of this light to 20, 20,000, 30,000 and check if it works. And remember to place this IS light uh, below the plane. It can't be yeah, in the plane because then it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, have you seen V-Ray 6 update? Uh, yeah, yeah, I see that there was update and I downloaded it. Yeah, but I didn't have time to uh, to analyze these changes. Yeah, but I see that there are there are a lot of changes in new updates. So yeah, maybe I will create tutorial about this video about these updates. Yeah, but I need to find some time to do this. Okay, so uh, okay, we are back and now I will work with sunlight. Mm, here I have sunlight and what is very important, here we have uh, sunlight properties, we have color, color mode, intensity and size multiplier. The most important is intensity, uh, I will leave one one is okay. Then I have size multiplier. It's the size of the sun. So if, um, where is, okay, I will turn on sunlight. Mm -hmm. Okay, here I have sun. Yeah. And uh, if size multiplier is set to one, I have very sharp shadows. And if I increase this value to 10, we can notice that the shadows are blurry. So you can decide. Mostly I increase these values to 10 or uh, to 20, 30, yeah, to have blurry shadows. I think that it looks very natural. And uh, what is more, you can change color mode. Mostly I, I leave it as it is, filter. and override, if I change it to override option, we can notice that our render is white. But remember that there is option to change this color mode to override and you will get very, very white render. Sometimes it looks fine. I think that today I will work on filter yellow sun. Okay, then I go custom, then I have custom orientation. I will turn it on. And now my sunlight is invisible because it's on the horizon. I need to place the sun above the horizon. Okay. And then I will rotate the sun. Yeah, I need to change. I need to check where is sunlight. Okay, it's behind my camera. 
and we have shadows on the right side okay i will rotate it and now i have shadows on the left side and i can decide how to place our sun to have very interesting effect for exterior renders it's very nice to have shadows then we'll, later we will add trees and these trees will create very interesting shadows so uh, i think that i will place this uh, sun yeah, on the left side over here horizontal angle is 236 vertical angle it's 36 Uh, any suggestion how to get crispy renders? Yeah, I think that there are a lot of things like lights, materials and quality of the render. Everything should work, should be set correctly. Yeah, realistic materials with reflections, with bump, uh, light, uh, lighting, many sorts of lights. For example, IES light, sunlight, dome light, and others. And quality of the renders, high quality, high resolution, and I think that's all. And the most important is practice. You need to create many renders. Of course, first renders will be weak, but later they will be better and better and better. So, yeah, I think that practice, practice, practice is the most important thing. And this is our lighting we can move on to materials and firstly i will focus on uh, elevation glass window frame and later on the ground pavement and others okay so firstly i will focus on the walls mm. I will create material. I click on this material and create generic material. It will be wall. And in the folder with uh, maps, you can find some, some maps. Uh, here we have wall reflection glossiness, wall normal. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, we can notice that uh, on the wall, the texture, the structure of this material will be visible. So it will not be very flat. Yeah, it will be something like that. So the, the effect will be very, very interesting. But firstly, we need to cho choose a color. I think that um, it will be bright, almost white color. Remember not to set 255 in RGB color mode because it's too bright. It doesn't work properly. It's yeah, it's not natural. I will set something ar uh, around 200. Okay. Then I have reflections. Uh, I will set intensity of reflection. For example, yes, something in the middle or even higher. And for reflection glossiness, I will upload a map. This map. I think that this map is a little bit too dark. So, um, so firstly, I will upload this map. Wall reflection glossiness. And automatically my transfer function is changed to none. So let's see that it's brighter. Yeah. Probably you remember from my webinars that I always set reflection color. It's intensity of reflection. You can always increase it or decrease it. And for reflection glossiness, I always upload a map. Yeah. And then I change it. For example, I brighten it or make it, make it darker. Yeah. And this is my material. And to add BAMP, I change mode to normal map because I'm uploading purple map. And 
and I will upload this normal map. Yeah, this is simple PBR material. Soon I will create a um, uh, tutorial video about PBR materials, where to find them for free. There are many websites. Sometimes I'm downloading um, one material and I'm applying these maps to other materials. So yeah, you can mix them. Okay, and remember not to set very, very high values, something around 0, 2, 0, 3 will be fine. Uh, remember, if you are setting color only in the diffuse tab, then we need to upload the map to the binding to check mapping in SketchUp. Uh, so I will copy this map, right click, right click, copy. I change texture mode to texture helper and then, uh, sorry, to custom. And then I right click in the texture and paste as copy. Okay. And thanks to it, if we upload, if we apply this material to the walls, then our map will be visible in SketchUp. So. Let's see that this mapping is very, very small. I need to go to the materials tab to edit and increase these dimensions to 254. Yeah, it looks fine. Maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah. 200. Yeah, it looks better, I think. And additionally, I will apply this material to the benches, to these elements. So a lot of white elements in the scene. Great. What about dirty walls at the top? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, we need a map for this. Maybe not today, but yeah, it's a great idea. Okay, and this is our wall. Mm, I will go, I go to the asset editor, to the render settings, uh, sorry, to the materials, and I will uncheck can be overridden option here in the wall properties, because still our mm, material override option is turned on. So remember to do that. Now my visualization will be darker, probably, we'll see. Yeah, a little bit. This material is different. Maybe my render is not uh, in a very high quality, so not everything is visible. With the higher quality, this material looks much interesting. Yeah, but I think that we can notice these grains, noise on the wall. Okay, let's move on. Create. Next material, it will be window frame. So I create generic material window frame. And we'll do this uh, very simply. Firstly, we need to set the color. It will be dark color, something around 40. Remember not to set zero, 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 something brighter, 40 in RGB. Okay. And then we have reflections, reflection color and reflection glossiness. Yeah. Something about something around that. And that's all. Nothing more. Very simple material. And I will upload this material to the window frame. Here, here, okay. And on the left side, probably it's invisible on the visualization, but still. And this is our frame. Uh, next material will be window. I will use Chaos Cosmos for this material 
window window uh, okay glass window neutral I will show you properties of this material if you want to create it from scratch or you can find this material mm, yeah it's here so diffuse color is black reflection color is set to 233 and then we have reflection IOR value is set to 1.8 and then we have refraction color refraction is transparency of this material is almost maximum 252 and we have IOR 1.53 I will decrease this refraction color because it's very transparent I will decrease this value just slightly yeah okay two hundred forty yeah so our window will be a little bit darker and let's apply it to the walls to the windows okay it's fine and then we have blinds so I will hide this um, slab and let's work on this material maybe it's not very important because it's behind the glass behind the window but still it will be visible on the visualization so I think that the model without any material doesn't look interesting so we need to create something it that it doesn't have to be very very um, complex material it can be simple color or color with reflection but remember to add to create material for every model okay so it will be lines okay i think that this gray color is fine then i go to the reflections and i set reflection glossiness to 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.7 something like that yeah, so very, very simple material. I guess it's almost invisible, but we need to create something. And I apply this material to the elements. I will hide it. Okay. And here we are almost done yeah it's done and uh, I think that we can create the render but before I do that remember to uncheck can be overridden option on every material yeah because still our material override option is turned on okay and let's take a look Okay, it looks very interesting. Yeah, we can notice that blinds are visible just a little bit, but it's important to um, to create materials for every model. Um, sometimes it, it's good to add uh, furniture in the interior because they are also slightly visible. Yeah, maybe not today, but remember about this. Uh, if your windows are transparent and you can see the interior, then you should add furniture next to the window to show that something is in the interior, that it's not empty building. Okay, it looks fine. Then we'll create another material. It will be stairs. Now this material I took it from Chaos Cosmos so you can find this material 
Also, I um, copied these maps to the folder. These are our maps, but you can find these materials also in KS Cosmos. And I will create, I will use these maps to create stars. Um, quite reflective material, so let's create this material stars and upload map. And as, al as always, diffuse in the reflection color I set value, for example, one, because I would like to get uh, quite um, reflective material. And then I apply material, this map to reflection glossiness. Let's see that you can create this map by yourself. Just change, sat desaturate this map and change contrast and then you will get this map. So you can also use um, color correction to change map from diffuse. Okay, it looks fine. If you want to get even more reflective material, you can brighten this map, just change transfer function to custom gamma curve and you can increase this value and then it will be much more reflective. Okay, I will set it to 1.4 or you can change it. You can, oh, sorry. Or you can change it to none to get brighten, brighter map. Okay, and additionally, normal map. I'm using HDR, uh, HDR map, Stanley 20, but it's bright. Uh, it's too bright. Um, so, um, maybe, are you using material override option? Mm, yeah. Because I turned on this material override option and thanks to it, my render is not very bright because with white color only it will be very very bright so yeah you should check it how do i make hidden lights for an exterior stairs i don't know exactly what you mean but maybe using rectangle light i think that for stars it's fine for stars it's fine yeah it's if it's too bright you can decrease you can decrease this intensity, for example, to five or to three, because each every uh, HDRI map works different. So, so sometimes you need to increase this value or decrease. Okay. Mm. My material. Okay, it's done, it's done. And normal map, I will decrease. to 0 0.2 as always oh, and, or exposure you can increase or decrease exposure okay and I apply this material to the stars remember to increase dimensions in the materials tab yeah now it looks much more interesting let's take a look on the details because I was modeling these stars and we can notice that we have some details and these details uh, makes make our visualization more realistic so remember when you are creating visualization you, so you should think about details because yeah they are very realistic Okay, and it's the same with benches, yeah, like small gaps. Okay, I need to change this material. <laughs> okay, it's fine. And then, okay, I go to stars and uncheck can be overridden option and render.
it looks fine. Maybe um, we can change color or saturation. Remember that using color correction, you can desaturate this map uh, to get gray color, something different. Yeah. So you can always change these materials if you want. And then I will create material for soil. I will use ready materials from Chaos Cosmos. Yeah, and I will choose this one. Soil B01, 200 centimeters. Yeah, I will choose this one. You can choose another. So I will use this ready material, mm, it's here, and apply it to the left plane and the plane on the right, and it looks fine. Here I will create grass, but I will do this in two minutes um, Yeah, using scatter tool. And only one material has left for pavement for tiles. I've created these tiles using um, floor generator. So if you want to just give me a second on my Instagram account, I'm showing how to use uh, yeah, how to use floor generator plugin. And if you want, I can send you this uh, plugin. Uh, yeah, just type in the comment floor and I will send you. That's all. Okay, so remember about my Instagram account. Okay, I will create another material tiles. And then I will, I will upload the map. Yeah, it's very interesting. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's here. Very interesting material. We will apply this material for the pavement. It looks like metal with scratches, something like that. But you will see that on the ties it looks really, really fine. So firstly, I will upload this map and I apply this to the group. Remember that we need to enlarge it, enlarge dimensions, change it. For example, maybe 300. Yeah, it looks fine. And it's very, very interesting. And later, um, then I go to reflections. Firstly, I need to set the reflection color to quite high value because to, I will upload map in the reflection glossiness. Let's take a look. Mm. This is our yeah, map for reflection uh, glossiness. It looks like soil, something like that. So. Remember that you can take map from uh, from soils uh, and and apply it to the pavement and you will get very very nice effect. Yeah, but you can um, find these maps when you from Chaos Cosmos for example from different materials and apply it to tiles. Okay. It's fine. And then, okay, maybe I will increase the reflection color to have more reflections. And then I go to bump. I will upload the map. And this is the same. The tiles normal. Yeah, it's quite noisy map. Yeah, it looks like this. You can also use this map for walls to get very nice effect for soil. Yeah, for sand, there are many materials where you can use this map. 
Okay, I change it to normal map and I will set it to quite high value 0 0.4 or 0 0.5, something like that. And that's all. That's our... We have created all materials. It's not... Um, we are not finished. I will turn off material override option. Maybe I will increase res uh, resolution slightly. And let's check the render. Okay. It looks fine. But um, maybe it's not very realistic because there is no grass, no plants, no trees. We need to fix it. So firstly, I will focus on grass. I will do this using scatter tool. Scatter tool is here. Scatter over selection, scatter viewer, mainly these two icons. You can find them, just right click and choose uh, V-Ray Objects, this one. Check V-Ray Objects and you will see these tools. So firstly, uh, remember that when you are creating scatter, then your SketchUp can work uh, slower because your file is heavier. So we need to think when we are creating scatter, for example, for this visualization, I need only small part on the left side and small part on the right side. So I will change this plane because I don't need grass here on the left side and on the right side because it's not visible on the render. If you are creating visualization and it's visible, then you have to um, apply scatter for the bigger plane. But in my case, I can make it smaller. Yeah. Okay. It looks fine. And I will do this here. Oh. I select these edges, move it to the left. Yeah, to have smaller planes. Okay, and I will do the same here. I want to make it smaller. Yeah, when you are creating exterior visualization, you need to think about your file, about the size of your file, about number of elements, number of trees, number of... Um, scatter is very important because you can have some problems when your file is too heavy. Okay, it looks fine. And now I can create scatter. To do this, it's very simple. Just click on the plane. Let's see that my plane is a group. It's very important to create a group. And then I select this group. I click on scatter over selection and we can notice that we get these dashed lines and this is our first scatter. Second plane, I click on it and again scatter over selection. Okay, if I go to asset editor and then I go to geometry we can notice that new positions has appeared. Scatter and scatter one. We can rename it, for example, grass left and grass on the right side. Okay. But uh, there are no grass, um, there are no grass in the scene. We need to create it or import it or simply use Chaos Cosmos. I click on the Chaos Cosmos and remember that here we can find many great uh, models, grass models, just type grass. And there are many, many models which we can use. I will show you my favorite ones. 
and they are somewhere here just give me a second i need to find them mm. it's ray grass um, maybe i will type it ray grass okay it's here ray grass i will use 004 005 and 006 this is my favorite one ray grass so i import it and place it for example somewhere here okay and again zero zero uh, it was zero zero ah six so i need another zero zero four it's a little bit different and zero zero five so i have three types of glass of grass they are very very uh, similar but they are not the same okay i would like to use them in my scatter tool to do this i go to the geometry tab click on grass left option on the right side i have properties and then i would like to add this grass to scatter to do this just click i will select all models i uh, press left control to select all models then i click again on scatter grass left and click on this button add guests add models i add them okay and i can notice a list um, probably your scatter scatter properties looks different because this is updated version and this is the newest one um, if you haven't updated your v-ray then you have a little bit different properties but i will show you how to set this correctly okay and then what is very important here we have instances count 1000 uh, parameters max count limit is 10000 then i have instances count 1000 i will leave it as it is but mostly i will focus on trans transforms tab it's almost at the bottom and here we have random scale if you are using older V-Ray versions, the scale is also at the bottom, somewhere here. It looks a little bit different. I think that it's simpler, but it's also at the bottom. Firstly, I will create interactive render to check, the, to check my grass. Just give me a second. When there is scatter in the scene, it might take a little bit longer okay to see the difference okay for now these grass elements are very very small and let's see here i have parameters i have instances okay let's take a look here we have instances uh, in older versions it's density and this is the same and then you can increase it or decrease it okay so it's very important parameter and additionally here i have transforms random scale and i can scale it for example from two to two and this grass is bigger for example three yeah and there are more models mm, i will increase instances number of instances okay to 2000 and it looks fine i think yeah remember that you can always change random scale for example from two to three yeah and they looks different some of them are smaller and some of them are bigger so you can decide you can rotate them 
a little bit, but I think that for grass it's not very necessary. Okay. I can change it to 2500. Okay, it looks fine. And I will do the same for the second scatter. And I will do the same. So I go to the grass on the right side. I These uh, models are selected. Then I choose add guests. I will render interactively. Okay. And again, here I can change um, Okay, here I can change scale. Okay, from free to free. Yeah, mm, just let me check different parameters. Oh, this is okay. It's fine. Uh, random distribution, 250. Oh, we can also check per area and it will be denser, but just give me a second. Okay. Okay. In, um, so it's a number of instances per this area and we can change these values if we want. So. It depends on you. Okay, I will increase it. It looks fine. Okay, and this is our grass. And then I go to the scene too, and let's take a look at our render, how it looks like. And it looks really, really nice. This is our grass. And then I will add plants. I will show you my favorite plants. Sometimes uh, you need to add uh, exact plant. For example, your client uh, says that he wants this kind of plant. So you need to create it. You need to place it in the scene. But sometimes you are creating a house only elevation and you can choose by yourself which plant you want to show on the visualization so i will show you my favorite one just give me a second this is common hazel common hazel yeah this one and it looks like this Okay, and the second one is uh, gloss something, gloss, oh. gloss abelia, or not, <laughs> a glossy, glossy. And it looks like that. So I will use these two kinds of plants. And trees later. Okay. And uh, I will move them. I will scale them. And place them correctly. Yeah, it looks like this. And then I... Move it here, I will copy it. I need some time to place it correctly. Sometimes you can use scatter for this. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm using like five or six models yeah, in this in this render so I think that scatter is not necessary but sometimes you can try use scatter for these plants okay we can scale it to make it interesting Maybe not this one. Mm, okay, almost done. And this one. Remember to rotate plants. Yeah, they shouldn't be the same. Okay. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, we can check the render and see the result with plants. I think that it will be much more interesting. And now we will add trees to get very nice shadows because um, now this uh, exterior is very very sunny without any shadows okay maybe i will enlarge this one yeah to make it bigger okay yeah you can try to place them in different positions yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of time with these plants but sometimes yeah if you want to get very nice effect you need to try different options try different plants to have the best one okay I will rotate it and it will be done Okay, I think it's fine. And let's render. And in the meantime, I will focus on the trees. I will use English oak. I really like this tree. It looks very nice on the visualization. And it looks like this or this. It depends on the type. Maybe this one, 003, looks nice. Okay. And this is our visualization. Maybe this one should be smaller, I think. But I will leave it as it is. I don't want to change it. Mm, okay. Let's place trees. I import it. Zero, zero, three. Okay. And let's take a look. I will show you something. I will place one tree only. And I will create interactive render because I would like to show you. Uh, I would like to show you some. One thing. Okay, I need to wait because there are more and more objects in the scene. Okay, this is our interactive rendering. And then I will minimize this window. And I click on this. Icon lock camera orienta orientation. It means that this view on the render is locked. So I can rotate the view in SketchUp and the view is still the same on the render in the frame buffer. And let's take a look. If I place these trees in the scene, Okay, we can notice that there are different shadows on the pavement. So when you are creating exterior visualization, you need to think about these shadows yeah, on the pavement. For example, now there is no shadows. I will scale it a little. And I can move these trees 
to create very nice shadow over here. Yeah, I can see it here. It looks nice. Yeah, the shadows are visible over here. Okay, I'll place it. Yeah, I think it looks fine. And again, I will copy them. Here and also I would like to show <laughs> some uh, trees, some leaves uh, in the foreground. So I need to place them next to the building. Okay, they are <laughs> very, very big. Okay, and I move them to the left. And I'm checking it on the render because this foreground is very important. And I'm moving this tree. Okay, almost done. It looks fine. Mm. Just give me a second. Okay, it looks fine, I think. Okay, and the same on the left side. I can notice that there are shadows on the pavement. It looks very nice. And I will copy. Yeah, there are additional shadows on the walls, on the elevation. Yeah, I think it looks very nice. So you can use these trees to get very nice foreground, very nice effect. Maybe I will move this tree because it's too dark. I will scale this tree, the second tree. Yeah, you can, you need to try different options because without it, it's impossible. Okay. And it's done. Okay, I will hide it for a second to change. Okay, I think that this this tree is not necessary okay and looks fine and there is question about clouds yeah maybe we can because this um, sky is from dome light maybe it doesn't look very very interesting so we can always change it yeah super reflection in the window from the trees yeah um, we can add additional trees over here in the center. Yeah, this is live webinar, so I will leave it as it is. But uh, you can add additional additional trees over here, and this reflection will be even more interesting. Mm, okay, let's change this um, sky. To do this, very simply, I go to the dome light. Dome light over here. And I set this light as invisible, okay? And let's see that um, it disappeared. Then I go to the render settings and environment over here. And here I can upload, mm. oh. but firstly, let's turn on environment. And let's see that um, we have environment sky. We can always increase this value to get brighter or darker color. 
but we can always uh, upload different map to the environment, to the background. I will do this. So right click, uh, clear, and I will upload here different HDRI map. Mm, just give me a second. Exterior. Mm. I'm trying to find different different HDRI maps. Uh, Dom light. Maybe here? No. Where is this uh, exterior to just see? Oh, okay, I have it. It's here. I will uh, add different HDRI maps. They are downloaded from polyheaven.com. You can find it there. And for example, I will use this Meadow 2 uh, map. I remember that this map, yeah, there are many trees in this map and they are almost, they are visible here in the sky, but it's very, very dark. So remember, if you want to change this view, uh, this sky, just go to the background environment and increase intensity of this. Okay, now it's too bright of this map. Oh, you can always change it here. Mm, I think that it's not very natural. It's different lighting. So probably this blue color was fine because this one is yeah, weird. So maybe I will clear it and choose um, sky as it was before. Yeah. And it's white. I think that it's better option than other HDRI map. Okay. And additionally, I will create a exposure layer to increase brightness. We can decrease highlight burn. We can increase contrast if we want. And remember about uh, filmic tone map. I really like this layer. And here we can have more contrast. Okay, I think it looks fine. Maybe even without filmic tone map. It looks very, very nice. And that's not all, because we can always add something in, on, in the foreground. And I've prepared a very nice file with leaves. Mm. It's this one. You can download it from the library. This is simple file from 3D Warehouse. So you can find this file in 3D Warehouse. Uh, they are just planes, which looks like yeah, leaves. And let's place them in the foreground. And it will give very nice effect in the exterior. Okay, it looks nice. Let's take a look. I will move them down. Okay. And let's render the scene. Um, yeah. And let's wait for the final effect. Remember, if you like this webinar, you can leave a like or subscribe. So feel free <laughs> to do this. Okay. And let's see that in the foreground, we have leaves green and brown. And it, it looks very, very natural, very nice effect. Uh, so remember that these details in the foreground are very important. And this is our exterior visualization. Remember that you can always move trees, choose different plants, uh, different grass, and you will get different effect. But I think that this exterior visualization looks very nice. And
and that's all for today remember about uh, my website edark.org mm, if you want to learn more about V-Ray for SketchUp if you want to mm, you can always uh, watch different tutorials different webinars on our channel we have something around 50 50 videos about V-Ray for SketchUp so feel free to check our uh, check our YouTube channel, check our website, see our courses, 3D models and everything. And also Instagram. <laughs> this is something new. Yeah, and I'm adding new tutorials on Monday and on Wednesday. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you very much for being here. It was very nice to spend this night <laughs> in this on this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you for every comment. They are re really nice. Yeah, and see you soon. I think that the next webinar will be in the next year, probably. Yeah, but in one week on Tuesday or on Wednesday, I will add new tutorial about materials for interiors. So, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice day or have a nice evening. Bye.